Yuma versus Kite. These two have three duels throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal series. Kite stands as the benchmark for Yuma and Astral's growth as duelists. Spoilers, Kite demolishes Yuma and Astral in their first duel. The rematch, however, is played exclusively by Astral until the final turn, where it ends in a draw. With how things have been going, you'd think that the final duel would end with Yuma's victory. But alas, Kite wins again. This essentially makes Kite one of only two rivals throughout the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise that has never lost to the main character. So the question then becomes, if we analyse all of the duels between Kite and Yuma, can we see if they really gave their all in each of them? Or if any minor changes could have changed the outcome of the duel? Let's find out! The duel begins and Kite goes first. He draws, and his opening hand consists of Daybreaker, Shining Angel, Goddess with the Third Eye, Light Serpent, Photon Veil, and Photon Lead. Kite immediately activates his Photon Veil. Due to its effect, he can shuffle three light monsters in his hand back into his deck to add one to three level four or lower light monsters from his deck straight to his hand. However, if he chooses to add three monsters, they must all share the same name. And so, Kite shuffles his Daybreaker, Shining Angel, and Goddess with the Third Eye back into his deck, and then adds three copies of Daybreaker to his hand. Following this, Kite plays Photon Lead, which lets him special summon a level four or lower light monster in his hand. He summons his first copy of Daybreaker. Now, Daybreaker's effect kicks in. Since it was special summoned, it summons another of itself from his hand to the field. The second copy's effect then activates, summoning the third. With three level fours on his field, he overlays all three to exceed summon his number 10, Illuminite. Kite activates Illuminite's effect by detaching one material. He discards one card in his hand to draw one new card. He sends Light Serpent to the grave and draws Plasma Ball. Now, since Light Serpent was sent to the grave via an effect, its effect kicks in allowing it to special summon itself to the field. Kite Normal summons his Plasma Ball, and then, with two level 3s on the field, he overlays both to exceed summon his rank 3, number 20, Giga Brilliant. Kite ends his turn. Overall, what a turn. Kite managed to get out two number monsters with relative ease. The only criticism I would have with this play, and it's only a small one, he could have used Giga Brilliant's effect, might as well get his monster's attack up by 300 to 2100, and then next turn he could use it again to get it up even more. In the grand scheme of the duel, it doesn't really matter, but if we want to be technical, it would have been slightly better play. But other than that, a fine first turn. It's Yuma's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Gogogo -Go Golem, Gagaga Magician, Zubaba Knight, Monster Slots, Cross Attack, and Copy Knight. In contrast to Kite's turn, Yuma simply sets Gogogo -Go Golem face down and ends his turn. It's back to Kite, and he draws mm, something. This card won't be revealed or played. This is because Kite immediately activates the effect of his Illuminite, detaching another material to discard the card he just drew. He then draws a new card. He gets Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Kite uses Giga Brilliant's effect. By detaching one material, it increases its own attack by 300. Kite enters his battle phase and attacks Yuma's set Gogogo -Go Golem. However, due to its effect, it's not destroyed once per battle. Kite attacks again and finishes the job. Kite moves to his main phase 2 and tributes his two monsters to special summon his ace, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. You see, this monster can only be special summoned by tributing two monsters with 2,000 or more attack. And now, whilst on the field, unbeknownst to Yuma, whenever Galaxy Eyes battles, it can banish itself and the opponent's attacking monster and then return them at the end of the battle phase. By doing so, it will remove all materials from the opponent's Xyz monster and then gain 500 attack for each one that it removed. The perfect monster to counter Xyz users. With this play, Kite ends his turn. It's back to Yuma, and he draws Blustering Winds. He summons Gagaga Magician and then activates Monster Slots. Now, by targeting one monster on the field and one monster in his grave, with the same level, he can banish the monster in the grave and then draw one new card. And if that drawn card is the same level as the other two monsters, he can special summon it. He banishes his Golem and draws the level 4 Ganbara Knight. Now, with two level 4s, Yuma overlays both to exceed summon his number 39, Utopia. Yuma activates Blustering Winds. This increases Utopia's attack by 1000. Now, with enough attack, Yuma enters his battle phase and attacks Galaxy Eyes. However, Kite reveals Galaxy Eyes' effect. Both monsters are banished. Yuma ends the battle phase, and then both return. However, Utopia has lost its materials. 
while Galaxy Eyes has gained 1000 attack. Yuma ends by setting his Copy Knight trap face down. It's Kite's turn and he draws Photon Wind. Kite immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Utopia. Since numbers can only be destroyed in battle by other numbers, Utopia isn't destroyed. However, Yuma still takes the damage. Kite activates his quick play spell, Photon Wind, which when a monster inflicts battle damage, but the monster isn't destroyed, it allows him to inflict 1000 damage to the opponent and then draw a card. Yuma takes 1000 damage and Kite draws Luminize. Kite ends his turn by setting Luminize face down. It's Yuma's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. Yuma hesitantly draws and gets Mirror Mail. Here, Yuma is faced with two options, switch Utopia into defense or attempt to take Galaxy Eyes head on. Astral advises Yuma not to play cautiously as most likely Kite will have prepared for such an event. And so Yuma decides to go all out. However, ironically, in hindsight, if Yuma would have done his play, switched Utopia into defense and played defensively, he would have lived longer in the duel. He would have gained another turn. Going all out, Yuma summons Zubaba Knight. Now since a level 4 warrior was summoned, he can activate Copy Knight, which summons itself as a copy of Zubaba Knight with zero attack and defense. Yuma overlays both to exceed summon his rank 3, Leviathan Dragon. He detaches one material from it to activate its effect. It increases its own attack by 500. Yuma then activates Cross Attack, targeting Utopia and Leviathan Dragon. Since both have the same attack, he can now attack directly with one, while preventing the other from attacking at all. And so, Yuma attempts to attack directly. However, Kite plays his set Luminize, which negates the attack, and instead increases Galaxy Eyes' attack by Utopia's attack. Yuma ends his turn by setting Mirror Mail face down. The plan here was to attack with 2500 attack, wait for Kite's turn, Kite declares an attack with Galaxy Eyes, Yuma plays Mirror Mail, this will make both of the monsters attack each other, Galaxy Eyes will be destroyed, and then Yuma can attack directly the game. However, it's not going to work. It's Kite's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets Photon Cerberus. He summons it to the field, and then activates its effect to prevent either player from activating set trap cards on the field. With Mirror Mail unable to be activated, Yuma and Astral have no defense. Kite attacks for game. However, before the attack can connect, Kite receives word that his brother has collapsed. Kite abandons the duel, and the duel ends with no winner. However, definitively, Kite won this match. Even more so, he won this match and didn't take a single life point of damage. As the camera pans away, Yuma and Astral are left distraught. Overall, this duel is really simple to analyze. Kite played the best possible duel he could with the cards he had. Honestly, there wasn't much more he could have done better. Whereas for Yuma and Astral, the crucial moment was unfortunately not playing defensively in that turn. I'm not going to call it a misplay because you need hindsight. Going for what they thought could have been the win was legit, could have been the win. It just depended on what Kite's face down was and then what card he was about to draw next turn which unfortunately stopped the attack and then stopped his trap card. However, had Yuma simply switched his Utopia into defense and then ended his turn there, well, what could have happened is when it's Kite's turn, he would have summoned his Cerberus. The back row wouldn't have worked regardless. Kite would have attacked with his Galaxy Eyes, removing both monsters. He would have attacked directly with his Cerberus. Yuma would have had about 200 life points left and then next turn Cerberus' effect would have ended. So it's possible that Yuma could have got his Mirror Mail playoff on the next turn. However, it all depends on what Kite would have drawn for his next turn. So it's just speculation, but theoretically, Yuma did have a chance if he played defensively. Astral gave not bad advice, but unfortunately advice that ultimately cost him the duel. Anyway, let's jump into the next duel. The rematch begins and Astral goes first. He draws and his starting hand consists of Go 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 Golem, Double Defender, Battle Break, and three cards that are never seen, never used, and will ultimately be shuffled into the deck later in the duel. Astral sets Go 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 Golem and Battle Break face down and ends his turn. It's Kite's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Reverse Buster, Photon Circle, Photon Leo, Galaxy Storm, 
Photon Spear and Photon Hurricane. He begins by summoning Reverse Buster. He then enters his battle phase and attacks. Due to Reverse Buster's effect, spell and traps can't be activated until the end of the damage step. And not only that, but when this monster attacks a set monster, the monster attacked is immediately destroyed and then this card gains 500 attack. Kite sets Photon Hurricane face down and ends his turn. It's Astral's turn and he draws Gogogo -Go -Go Giant. He summons it and then uses its effect to special summon Gogogo -Go -Go Golem from his grave. This effect then switches Giant into the fence. Afraid of Kite's set card and Galaxy Eyes in his deck, Astral decides not to summon Utopia. Instead, he activates Double Defender to negate one attack every turn, so long as he controls two monsters in face-up defense. Astral sets a mysterious trap face down here. This trap won't be revealed, it won't be played, and it's gonna get bounced back into his deck in a minute. It's implied to be defensive in nature, so do with that information what you will, but yeah, doesn't matter what it is. Astral ends his turn. It's Kite's turn, and he draws Armored back. It turns out, not summoning Utopia was a grave mistake as Kite activates his set Photon Hurricane. This spell returns all spell and traps on the field back to the hand. Kite reveals here that if Yuma had summoned Utopia, he couldn't have defended against it. Yuma could have destroyed his monster, and by destroying his monster, Kite wouldn't be able to do the play he's about to do now. So, this is actually the second huge misplay Astral has made so far. He played too defensively, he played too cautiously, and it's gonna cost him. Kite tributes Reverse Buster and summons Photon Leo. Photon Leo's effect then activates, which when it's summoned, forces Astral to shuffle his entire hand back into his deck and then draw the same amount of cards. Astral shuffles Double Defender, Battle Break, and three mysterious cards into his deck. He then draws Zubaba Knight, Decrease, Drop Exchange, a Corno, and Kagito Kage. Kite activates Photon Spear, equipping it to Photon Leo. This grants it piercing battle damage. Photon Leo attacks and destroys Gogogo -Go -Go Giant, dealing damage to Astral. Kite sets Armored back face down and ends his turn. It's back to Astral, and he draws Xyz Reflect. He summons Zubaba Knight. Astral discards Decrease in order to special summon a Corno. Astral activates Drop Exchange. By sending two monsters to his grave, he can summon a monster in his hand with the sum of the monster's levels. He sends his level 3 and level 1 to the grave to summon his level 4 Kagito Kage. Astral overlays Gokugo -Go Golem and Kagito Kage to exceed summon number 39, Utopia. Utopia attacks. Photon Leo is destroyed. However, Kite activates his set, Armored Back which brings back Photon Leo and re-equips it with Photon Spear. Astral sets Xyz Reflect face down and ends his turn. It's Kite's turn, and he draws Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. He summons Photon Circle and then activates Photon Spear's second effect. Photon Leo is now treated as two tributes for a monster. And so Kite tributes Photon Leo to special summon Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Kite attacks Utopia. As he does, he uses its effect to banish both. Photon Circle then attacks directly. The battle phase ends, both monsters return, Galaxy Eyes attack increases, while Utopia's materials are gone. Kite ends by activating his Galaxy Storm. This destroys an Xyz monster that has no overlay units. However, Astral activates his set Xyz Reflect to negate the effect of Galaxy Storm and instead inflict 800 damage to Kite. It's back to Astral, and he draws Clean Barrier Clear Force. Astral performs a Chaos Xyz evolution, overlaying his Utopia with his number C39 Utopia Ray. Astral activates Utopia Ray's effect, detaching one material so that it can increase its own attack by 500, and then decrease one monster the opponent controls by 1000. Astral attacks Photon Circle, attempting to go for game. However, it is revealed any damage inflicted in battles via Circle is halved. Astral sets Clean Barrier Clear Force face down and ends his turn. As he does, Utopia Ray's attack returns to normal. It's Kite's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws Photon Shock. Kite immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Utopia Ray, 
attempting to go for game. However, Astral activates Clear Force to return the attack of all monsters' kite controls to their original values. Utopia Ray is not destroyed as Galaxy Eyes isn't a number, and Astral survives the battle. Kite ends his battle phase, and as he does, Galaxy Eyes' attack returns to 4,000. And here, something very weird happens. We don't actually see Kite end his turn. Instead, we cut to Yuma and all the shenanigans going on outside of the duel, and the next time we come back to the duel, it's the start of Astral's turn. However, something happened in this end phase, which wasn't shown on screen. And what is it? Well, it's because they didn't show him set Photon Shock face down. Keep this detail in mind and observe all of the shots I'm about to show you, because you will not see a set trap at all except for when Kite activates the card. It's Astral's turn and the final turn of the duel. Yuma appears with the power of Zexel and merges with Astral. Using this new power, Yuma performs a Shining Draw. A Shining Draw allows a duelist to draw any card they so wish. However, if they are exceptionally strong, they can even fabricate a card into reality that's perfect in helping them with the situation at hand. And that's exactly what happens here. Yuma manifests ZW Unicorn Spear to the top of his deck. He equips it to Utopia Ray. Due to its effect, the attack of Utopia Ray is increased by 1900. Utopia Ray then attacks Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon. The second effect of Unicorn Spear then activates. This prevents Galaxy Eyes from using its effect during the battle phase. If this attack is successful, Kite loses the duel. However, Kite plays his set Photon Shock, which makes Yuma take the same amount of battle damage he would take. And so, Utopia Ray destroys Galaxy Eyes, and both Duelist life points drop to zero. The duel ends in a tie. However, my question becomes, when did Kite set that trap card? Well, we know now, doesn't it? It was in the last turn, but they never showed it. I'm gonna blame the animators for this. In terms of this duel, though, Kite was on top of the entire duel. Astral did have an opportunity to swing the duel into his favor, but played too defensively, which is ironic considering that's what let him down in the last duels. Kite played his best he possibly could. Unfortunately, however you feel about the ability to manifest a card to the top of your deck that is perfect to counter a very specific situation, that ultimately was the power that they had and they used it to almost win the duel. So I think this duel was fair. Ending in a draw, I also think was fair and square. However, we have one final duel to look at. The final duel begins, and Yuma goes first. He draws, and his opening hand consists of Gunbara Knight, Gagaga Magician, Double Bind, Flash Effect, Zero Zarok, and Dimension Gate. Yuma starts by summoning his Gunbara Knight in attack. He then activates the continuous spell, Zero Zarok, to prevent all face-up attack position monsters with zero attack from being targeted for attacks. Yuma ends his turn. It's Kite's turn, and he draws. Note that Kite's heart isn't in this duel. Oh my god, I just got it. His brother's name's Heart. His heart's not in the duel because his brother's safe now. That's incredible. Do you think they knew that? I don't know, but that's, that's a good coincidence. Kite's opening hand consists of Photon Frasher, Photon Crusher, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, Battle Gravity, Galaxy Burst, and Battle Simulation. As Kite controls no monsters, he special summons Photon Frasher. He then normal summons Photon Crusher. Kite tributes both to special summon Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Kite enters his battle phase and attacks. As he does, he activates the quick play spell Galaxy Burst to halve the attack of his Photon Monster, and then target two face-up cards the opponent controls and negate their effects. Gumbara Knight and Zero Zero Rock have their effects negated. Gambara Knight is destroyed. Kite enters his main phase two and activates Battle Gravity. Now, if a player controls a monster that did not attack that turn, they take 1000 damage when the battle phase ends. Kite sets his battle simulation face down, and as he does, Galaxy Eyes' attack returns to normal. It's Yuma's turn, and he draws Goblinburg. He summons Goblinburg and then activates its effect to special summon a level four or lower monster in his hand. He summons Gagaga Magician. Yuma overlays both to exceed summon his Utopia. Utopia attacks Galaxy Eyes. However, he uses Utopia's effect by detaching one material to negate his own attack. Now, since a monster's effect was activated during the battle phase, Yuma can activate his Flash effect, which increases the attack of Utopia by 800 and then negates the effects of all monsters on the field. Due to this, Utopia's own effect is negated, meaning it can't negate its own attack. And so, 
the attack continues. However, before the attack can connect, Kite activates Battle Simulation, which halves the attack of both battling monsters, and prevents either from being destroyed by the battle. That would be the case, except Yuma plays Double Bind. Now, by targeting one monster he controls, whose attack has been decreased, he can double its attack and make it so that if that monster battles and the opponent's monster isn't destroyed by battle due to a card effect, then that effect is not applied. I'm just going to jump in here real quick. Zexal has some of the most situational cards I've ever heard of in my entire life. Did you just hear what I just explained to you? You would never play this card in real life. It is so hyper-specific to such a specific scenario. I guess he's put this in because he knows he's playing Kite, but come on. It's a bit. It's a bit. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Let's carry on. Utopia destroys Galaxy Eyes. The battle phase ends and Flash Effect battle simulation and double binds effects all end. Yuma sets something face down and ends his turn. As he does, Kite gives up. His passion and motivation for dueling have gone and he no longer sees any reason to continue. The context for this, if you don't know, is that he used to duel so that he could save his brother, who's a number hunter. However, his brother is safe now, so what is he dueling for exactly? Well, luckily, after a speech from both Humor and Astral, Kite gains a new outlook on dueling. He smiles and returns to the duel. It's Kite's turn and he draws Card of Adversities. Since Kite controls no monsters and Yuma controls a special summon monster, he can activate it, allowing him to draw two new cards. He draws Excel Light and Daybreaker. Kite plays Excel Light since he controls no monsters. This lets him special summon a level four light monster from his deck. He summons Daybreaker. Daybreaker's effect kicks in allowing him to special summon another copy from his hand. Kite overlays his two Daybreakers to exceed summon his Star Liege Paladynamo. Kite activates its effect by detaching one material. This lets him decrease the attack of one monster to zero and negate the effect of all other cards on the field. Since Utopia's effect was negated, this means it has lost its number protection. And so Star Liege Paladynamo attacks and destroys it. Kite ends his turn. It's Yuma's turn and he draws Card of Spell Containment. He activates it to draw two cards at the expense of being unable to activate any more spell cards or set any other cards for the rest of this turn. Yuma draws Gagaga Clerk and Gagaga Caesar. Yuma summons Caesar and then special summons Clerk since there is a Gekaga monster on the field. Yuma activates Caesar's effect to banish Ganbara Knights from his grave to change all monsters on the field to the same level as the banished monster. With two level fours, Yuma overlays into rank four heroic champion Excalibur. He uses Excalibur to attack Paladynamo. As he does, he uses its effect to detach all of its materials to double its attack. Paladynamo is destroyed. Paladynamo's effect then kicks in, allowing Kite to draw one card. Kite draws, Xyz double back. Yuma's turn ends, and Excalibur's attack returns to normal. It's Kite's turn, and he draws Galaxy Zero. He activates Galaxy Zero to revive Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon. However, its effects are negated, and this card is equipped to it. Kite attacks Excalibur. Due to the third effect of Galaxy Zero, Photon Dragon loses 800 attack whenever it declares battle. Excalibur is destroyed. As the battle phase ends, Galaxy Eye's attack returns to normal. Kite sets Xyz double back face down, and ends his turn. It's Yuma turn and he draws Gegiga Draw. He activates it by banishing three Gegiga monsters in his grave. Now he can draw two new cards. He banishes Caesar, Clerk and Magician and draws Xyz Revival and Dimension Gate. Yuma activates Xyz Revival to special summon Utopia back from the grave. Yuma then Chaos Xyz Evolutions Utopia into number C39 Utopia Ray. Yuma activates the effect of Utopia Ray, detaching Utopia to decrease Galaxy Eyes' attack and increase his own. Yuma attacks Galaxy Eyes, but Kite activates the fourth effect of Galaxy Zero, which lets him send it to the grave to prevent the destruction of Galaxy Eyes once in battle. However, the final effect of Galaxy Zero then activates. Since it was sent to the grave, it reduces the attack of Galaxy Eyes to zero. It seems like Kite is about to lose. However, you all forgot about Yuma's Zero Zorok. Due to its effect, monsters with zero attack can't be attacked. And so now, Yuma is the one in trouble. If he can't declare an attack, he'll lose 1000 life points due to Kite's battle gravity. To avoid this, Yuma uses Dimension Gate. This banishes Utopia. And now, since he doesn't control a monster, he doesn't receive any damage. Yuma ends by setting Xyz double back face down. It's Kite's turn and the final turn of the duel. 
He draws and gets Galaxy Wizard. He summons it and then uses its effect to treat it as two level 8 monsters. Kite overlays his Galaxy Eyes and Galaxy Wizard, summoning out his rank 8 Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. However, due to Galaxy Wizard's final effect, it removes 2000 attack from Neo Galaxy Eyes. Kite attacks directly. However, Yuma plays the second effect of Dimension Gate. By sending it to the grave when attacked, he can summon back Utopia Ray with its effects negated. A replay occurs and Kite attacks again. Both monsters are destroyed. Now, since Yuma's Xyz monster was destroyed and he has no monsters on the field, he can activate his Xyz double back. This card can only be played on the turn his monster was destroyed. He can now resummon the Xyz monster just destroyed, along with another Xyz monster in his grave that has an equal or less attack to it. However, they are destroyed during the end phase of his next turn. With both monsters back, it seems as if Yuma is set up for victory. However, Kite plays his own Xyz double back. He summons Neo Galaxy Eyes and Galaxy Eyes. Both monsters attack and destroy Yuma's monsters. Kite wins the duel. This final play elicits memories of the graduation match from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. However, the card they used back then was Battle Fusion. Ironically, both Zane and Kite are the only rivals to the main character that have never lost to the main character. So that makes this play all the more fitting, really. Kite helps Yuma up after his defeat. Yuma promises that in their next duel, he will win. However, there will be no next duel. Which then poses the question to all of you. This duel happened on episode 72 and 73. There are around 140 episodes of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal series. So, with 70 more episodes of character development, dueling development, and deck development, who would win in a final duel at the end of the series? Kite Tenjo? or Yuma Tsukumo? I'm gonna let you guys answer that in the comments section below. It's interesting how Yuma and Astral didn't rely on a Zexal morph in this duel. I guess this duel was more for fun. It could be argued that Yuma and Astral didn't give their 100% in this duel. So yeah, those are the facts. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later.